Writing in ends is another way of dealing with knots, and it's one that I use quite often because it takes absolutely no effort at the time. But you do have to come back and weave in ends later, so the laziness as you're knitting doesn't really pay off in the end. But when does laziness ever pay off? So weaving in ends works really well if you don't want any extra bulk on the front of the piece, um, and if you don't want to do anything while you're, while you're knitting. You'll want to leave a nice tail of the, of the old yarn and start knitting with the new yarn. If you're worried about tension, you can make a slip knot to hold them in place before you start knitting with the new yarn. And so, we start knitting with the green. With this one, you don't really do anything at the time, and you can't weave in the ends until you have knit a few more rows. If I am going to weave in the ends as I'm knitting periodically, I'll leave about an inch of tail so that it stays out of my way, um, but still has some wiggle room while it's blocking. If I'm leaving them to weave in at the end, I don't cut them at all until after the piece has blocked. Now that we're past the point of the, um, the join, we can go back and weave in the ends. So we'll undo the slip knot, maybe. There we go. And thread the needle with one of the ends. You'll want to weave the new yarn in where the old yarn was and the old yarn in where the new yarn starts to prevent a hole. So you'll take one of the strands and thread it on a darning needle. And what you're going to do is follow the line of the old yarn. So we're going to go in here where the yarn came out and up and then following the, the, the arch there, we're going to come in and down. Whoop. And following this. If you want to make it extra secure, you can pierce the strand instead of just following it. And I always do that because I am a little bit neurotic about ends. And I give a lot of my knitting away and I don't want other people to have to worry about it. I usually weave in at least five stitches or an inch of tail. Um, that's a rule of thumb, although I actually usually weave in a fair bit more than that because as I said, I am a little particular. So once you've woven enough, you can trim the end. Again, this is part way through and I don't want to fuss with the ends or have them bother me, but I also want to leave enough that if it switches at all while blocking, it's not going to prevent, it's not going to unravel. So I'll leave about an inch there. It doesn't really add much bulk on the front. It's not visible on the front, but it does add a bit of bulk on the back. Then we'll take the old yarn and do the same thing. So again, we're going to follow. This is where the new yarn started. If you'll notice, it's making a kind of bumpy, loopy shape like this. And so the needle just follows the path up under those bumps and then down on the next one, and then up, and down, and again you can pierce the arch to make the join extra secure. With stockinette, you've got bumps on both sides where you're following the needle, but with garter, you've got to pay a bit more attention because you've only got them on one side. So as we follow the green strand of yarn, I'm not going up under this bump like we would if it were stockinette. Instead, I'm going under the knit stitch and then back down. So if you're piercing in garter, 
you can only pierce on one side. Under and down. Under and down. And that's how you do it. Thank you.